So how can gas and oil engineers transition into low carbon and renewable technologies? That's one of the questions we're going to ask today. Welcome to Beta Talk. I run a podcast that's all about plumbing, heating, renewables and low carbon technology. And this will be going out on the Installer Festival. So this will be going out uh, live for you guys. Uh, please follow the podcast if you find it on Spotify and, and, and all the others. Uh, I'm going to introduce you to my guests. I'm joined by a very good friend of mine, uh, Paul Hull. Paul Hull's one of my best mates in the industry. He's the commercial or the campaign director for the Gas Safe Superheroes. He's also the managing director of the commercial group. There's a lot of stuff uh, in commercial and domestic. Another good friend of mine, Keith Harrison. Keith uh, did my first ever podcast with me, I believe. He's based out uh, near Cambridge, uh, a good, a good gas engineer. And another friend of mine, Phil Hurley. Phil Hurley is the managing director for Neby Energy Systems Limited. He's also the vice chair of the Heat Pump Association. So today's uh, podcast is all about how can gas engineers, how can oil engineers think about or transition uh, to renewable low carbon technologies? You know, would they want to? Why would they want to? How can they do that? So Phil, I want to come to you first. We've been given some big numbers. Uh, the government's saying we've got to install a lot of heat pumps uh, in, in the next few years, haven't, haven't we? Yeah, um, well, the Committee on Climate Change of, uh, in their carbon budget has said by 2030, we need to be installing uh, around about a million heat pumps a year to achieve our uh, carbon uh, reduction targets. So at the moment, last year, approximately around about 25, 26,000 installed. So it's a, it's a big ask. Uh, and the only way we're going to achieve that is 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 getting installers engaged and, and getting installers trained to actually install those numbers. Because at the moment, if we look at installers of heat pumps and how we measure that is is basically with the MCS list. And and at the moment, certified on installers on MCS to install heat pumps is less than a thousand. So. If we're going to get those numbers, then we have to get installers trained to be able to do it. And that, that's, that, that is a challenge. And that is a challenge government recognises um, that, that we need to do that. And that's why we need the right policies and incentives to actually do that. Um, with the approximately about 130,000 on the gas safe register. Um, so over 100,000 installers out there. So, so there is over 100,000 to install. We're not going to do those overnight. Uh, at the Heat Pump Association, we recognise up to about 2025, we need to train at least 9,000 installers um, between now to actually get to the numbers we're, we're, we're saying by 2025. Um, so, so that is a challenge. Um, we recognise that in the Heat Pump Association and the wider heat pump industry um, that, that we've got to do that. Um, so ourselves we're looking at and it's having a it's having a correct training course so there is training courses out there and because heat pumps have, have probably not been as attractive to some installers because of 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 policy then then they are a bit rust rusty that these these training courses need to be revamped they're a bit whole old um and and really they they need to take installers and look at installers because Heating installers or plumbers have got the key skills already. Okay, we're not training new new entrants to this market. Yes, we still need apprentices and new entrants into the market, but there's there's actually hundred thousand installers out there. They've got the key skills. It's how we train them to upskill from installing a gas boiler to installing a heat pump because the actual heating system doesn't change. You've still got to put pipes in, you've still got to put circulation pumps in, radiators. The only real difference is, is that it's a different type of a heat source. The main probably difference between heat pumps is, is that they have to be correctly designed uh, and sized. And that, that, that is something maybe installers over the last... 10, 10 years, I've, 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 I've lost probably that because of the way gas boilers are now. Most gas boilers are, are, are com combination boilers, um, very high out output. So if a design is, 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 is not correct, then they're very forgiving because all you need to do is turn the thermostat up and, and you get more heat out of it. So the problem solved with, with heat pumps, it's not that simple um, that, um, that they need to be sized correctly. So. So that is probably one of the biggest challenges, how, how we actually um, you think get that's back to those. Do you think that's something that puts 
puts people off the fact do you, i mean do you think even i mean keith would that be something that put you off you know that the fact they need to be designed a little bit more correctly than than your average combi boiler i don't no i don't think it wouldn't put me off it all depends on the customer like if you go in talking all this and they're a bit confused with it or would have no idea if someone comes in and says oh i can do it for four grand cheaper by putting a combi boiler in you've lost work so i think that's where that's all where i stand with it really it's, it is the cost implement more than anything else because i mean um, the re- one of the reasons why i, why I picked you to fill this podcast because obviously i know where you live you, you live in a very sort of a rural area where there's lots of oil Yet yeah. you don't do oil. You've always gone, you know, your family's done gas. So you've never had to, to see that, you know, you, you so, so what would make or incentivize an installer like yourself to maybe do renewables? Um, I, I think the way I look at it, I, I haven't had enough call for it around here. I guess maybe because I'm not advertising the fact that I could do it. Maybe that's it. Um, mm. But we've had over what 18 years of me doing it i've had two customers ask about it um and they were in the last couple of years but again you know i I do i have customers ask about like the process of it which i know a tiny bit about but they don't ask go to the stage where they want to have one fitted they're just like we heard about this heard about that um but i'm yeah i'm unfortunately at the moment being just gas safe registered not in position to be able to offer my services to to fit them or, or, or even educate them as well as I'd like to. Now, Paul, you, 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 uh, you work very closely with the gas uh, industry. Uh, you're, you're the um, campaign director for Gas Safe Superheroes. So you're, you're very much uh, involved in how we make that industry a lot safer, as we know. And as Phil just said, we've got quite a lot of gas engineers out there. I mean, what, what do you think would incentivize them to sort of maybe go, go down this route? Well, I think the only way you're really going to incentivise it is actually money from the government, isn't it? It's got to be direct intervention from the government. We see, I think it was two weeks ago, they launched the £4,000 grant towards heat pump installations. But as what I was speaking to, a lot of people do heat pumps. The average install a heat pump, because you're going to have to do something with the hot water normally, is around £11,000 mark. And you think if you're doing a gas install, there's a big, big difference between the two, the two systems being put in at the moment. Plus, you're going to have to maybe oversize your radiators, and some of the pipe work will probably have to change in the house as well. So it's a big step on retrofit to put these items in at the moment. So consumers play a big part in this field, don't we? We've got to try and change maybe the mindset of consumers yep. a, a little way. Yeah, and, that, and that's, why, that's why installers are so important in this, because a lot of the decisions made by the, the consumer is, is recommendations by by the installer, they're, they're, they're invited into the house and they listen to their knowledge and advise on what, what's best for the system. And, and, and like Keith just said there, he's only been asked twice. So it, it, it's an education for consumers, but also if the question's asked, if we've only got less than a thousand installers and, and 100,000 gas installers, then they're gonna, they're gonna say, what do you want? What, what do you recommend in my house? They're gonna straight away say, say a gas boiler. But as, as going back to what Paul says, that there has to be policy in place with government. Okay, so government at the moment is saying the right things. Okay, they've already committed to phasing out high carbon fuels off the gas grid by 2030. Um, they've also said that by uh, 2025, um, in new build, there may be no gas connection in there, and we need and we need um, a low carbon solutions. Um, we're looking at the new building regs consultation, which is which is out now, uh, which is which is um, with the government at the moment. One of the things which is is looking pretty um, good in there at the minute is that one of the things they 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 look like they are going to implement is a lower flow temperature. Now. That is a big step because we've been asking for that for a long time. And, and, and all we're asking for within the heat pump is a bit of a level playing field because, as Paul says, you go into a, a gas system now, you generally just have to change the gas boiler. You don't really have to do a lot of controls if, if not needed. You don't have to upgrade the radiators. So with a heat pump, you have to do everything. So, so actually lowering the flow temperature actually it me, means that both systems become more efficient. It means condensing boilers are more in condensing mode, in, in the heating mode. And, but it also makes that system, if it is gas now, and there's no going away, gas isn't going away, it's going to be around for the next at least 10 to 15 years. But if we're installing gas now, 
what we should be doing is making those systems heat pump ready now that when that when that yeah, gas agreed. when that gas boiler comes to its end of its natural life that when it is replaced there isn't the wholesale uh, replacement of, of of the heating system it's just a case of repl replacing the gas boiler for 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 an air source or a ground source heat pump or whatever uh, and and so that 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 is that is a big step change um, and this is where we need building rigs to be changed now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I was, I was yes. going to say exactly the same. I mean, I can't. The, I think the issue is I can't imagine um, you know new build sites who price work plumbers are going to want to do additional work if they if you know if they've got a bulk load of one boiler, uh, then they've got a fork out to put additional work in to make it ready for an air source heat pump. That needs to be like a legislation. So it needs to be said that this has to be done, not that yeah. it's good practice. Yeah, and that's where, that's where we're saying in in in, our, in the heat heat pump association roadmap is that new build is is going to probably be between between now and 2025 is is probably going to be the biggest growth of heat pumps, and then the next challenge, which is the biggest challenge, is retrofit. How we that is the massive challenge. 26 million homes out there. We're not saying they're all going to be replaced with with heat pumps, but 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 there is a large proportion which would be suitable for heat pumps and that's the biggest challenge so so by by between now and 2025 creating a market within the new build um, creating a market within the off-grid area to, to phase out high carbon fuels and if, if we get up to nine ten up to twenty thousand installers then we've got more competition out there we've got more more skills out there and then, and then, if we've if we've got an actual industry formed, then then the next challenge of retrofit doesn't become as much of an issue with the right policies put in place. And I think all people need, especially industry, is policies in place and to know where we're going and a roadmap to where we're going to go, so we can plan. Uh, and that's all businesses want. If there's policy in place and they know where they're going, they'll plan for it. They'll do, take the correct training and, and and they'll go there and let the industry actually grow at its own pace. I want to pick you up on your roadmap. So, so the Heat Pump Association developed this roadmap, didn't it, Phil? And in there, you talk about new builds and, and, and get it into building rigs. And there is something in there because we've historically had a problem with building rigs because a new builder or a new developer, uh, and you'll know more about this tonight, haven't always had to adhere to the, the current rigs. They can sort of step back a little bit and go to something that was years and years that preceded yeah. it, can't they? Yeah, and we saw, we saw that in, in the last... Um, downturn in building is that if 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 a house builder does their foundations uh then they've started the site so even if they don't build the house for another five ten years it'll still be at the original building regs so so i, th I think the numbers were um of the houses built last year i think 40 percent were 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 pre-2009 <laughs> building regs which is crazy okay so you're so, buying a house that's unfit for today yeah, yeah, and we're having and to that, retro, and it's crazy that we're building new homes now that we're going to retro, we're going to have to retrofit in the next twenty years. It's just crazy. So would that would that also mean that a lot of the SAP ratings of ten years ago would still be the same today? Is that the, is that yeah. what we're sort of saying? Yeah. See, that, that is nuts, isn't it? That is yeah, nuts. And, and the problem is they're never going to go above and beyond the rating they need because why would they? No, no, it won't. Would uh, it? No. no. No, so so that is one of the recommendations. That was one of the recommendations in the consultation. I think mm. from 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 the industry mm. was that you had a fixed period of one, once you, you had planning permission um, granted that you had a fixed period to actually build. You couldn't have like grandfather rights for forever once you'd done the foundations, uh, because because we're going to have a building regs change now and then we're going to have another one in 2025. So mm. it, well, yeah. Um, so how long will, will the 2020 building regs be, be allowed for, for, for homes? Will we be still building in 2029 homes, homes which have got building regs pre-2020? So, so that really needs to be looked at as well. So we need, yeah. we, we need policy to sort of help uh, spur on this sort of, uh, and, and get, get these um, heat pumps into buildings. But I mean, is there something, is there something installers can be doing now? Obviously, we, we, we want to... I mean, I, I do this podcast and I know that a lot of my listeners are sort of what I would call the early adopters to this technology. They're very enthusiastic about it. They're the early adopters. They're sort of the first cohort of people interested. I mean, is there anything installers that there might be installers out there thinking, well, I want to go into this niche. Um, maybe I can advertise myself as being able to 
to, to use this technology. I mean, what, what can they do? Obviously, we need policy to sort of really spur this on, but is, is there things that the installer can be doing right now? It's training, and one of the one of the barriers which has been seen on on heat pumps for installers is is um, at the moment there is a, a government incentive for, for homeowners called the renewable heat incentive, which which is pretty attractive for their source and very attractive for for, for for ground source. However, to actually access that that incentive, the installer needs to be uh, a an MCS or a micro generation certificated installer. And, and that historically was very much, and, and, and rightly so, very much um, consumer protection um, um, policy to protect the homeowner. So it, and, and if it's government money, then, then, then they want to make sure the consumer's protected. But, but at the start of it, it was more consumer protection than more about the skills needed to install. So that has changed over, over the recent years that it's become more about standards. And, and I think MCS now it is looking that it needs to change. It needs to become less bureaucratic and it needs to become simpler if we're going to get the amount of installers into it. But that is a challenge because at the moment an installer doesn't, doesn't need to have any of those with a gas system. So, no. so it, that is a challenge that getting a, an installer now without the policy in place would there be an incentive to become an ncs installer that 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 is the big challenge so so they need to go hand in hand uh, together so can i just jump yeah, can i just jump in there just pull you back to something you said a little while ago but and um you said about there's a hundred i'd say a thousand installers on the ncs register at the moment that are registered to do heat pumps mm. um I do some work on the standards forum committee for which sort of feeds into iGen, the standard committee in gas. Yeah. And what, what, what I'm seeing here is that we need the heat pump association to align itself and work together with the gas industry. I'm gas through and through. My dad was British gas. <laughs> He'd done the town gas conversions. Yeah. But everybody's realized that the, the world's not going to carry on. Change is coming. The gas industry is going to have to change. And eventually fossil fuels eventually will go yeah yeah i don't think anybody can deny that yeah no it might be a mix of heat pumps and hydrogen boilers solar well, we don't know exactly yeah. there might be even new technology out there yeah. we don't know exactly just, exactly batteries but what we need to need all sides of the industry to come together and work yeah. together and yeah, at the moment what we're feeling is that like the heat pumps people don't want to talk to the gas because they're worried about their that, that coming together, yeah, and then there seems to be a lack of cooperation between all factions here. Because when we've got a hundred thousand gas engineers, yeah, so we've got the database, we've got all the engineers, right, but they need to be retrained, and the retraining is huge. Yeah. It's huge from heat pumps to solar, and we can't. We've got to use the example of solar and not let this happen in the heat pump industry. Would you say, Paul, um, this is because, I mean, as you and I would know, that the, the, the gas industry you and i would say is is the installer and we need the installer yes. to have a lot of voice but our industry would say the gas industry is is, is the gas board of manufacturers and as we know they've got um they want to go that h2 hydrogen route not all of them because some of them do do heat yeah. pumps as well but for the majority of them they want to so like you said you own wanna... heat pump companies Nathan, yeah they do but, i mean you yeah. you want to you want to engage the installers i suppose from this gas industry to sort of engage with the heat yeah. pump. Because it's the stores are going to drive this. Yeah? You've got 100,000 stores going to people's houses. You've got the best marketing budget in the world. Like all of a sudden, we've done our campaign, The Guard the Cards. Yeah? Like you've got an installer going into somebody's house. Yeah? They've been invited. That's your best salesman you're ever going to have. Yeah? Yep. And if he or she's got the equipment to align there and say, look, you can have this gas boiler, but you can also have a heat pump. Here's the pros. Here's the cons. Here's what it is. And they're actually informed. They say, look, this is government change. You're going to have there's going to be government money involved. You're going to be doing, your, you're going to be lower flow temperatures, your heating bills will be more economical. You've got to align these people with the tools, the correct tools to go into people's houses and do this. Yeah. And there you're going to be your biggest drive force because the market budget for that, you think there's 100,000 engineers every week going you know, in people's houses. I mean, I'll never get asked commercially, never. So that's like the, the, the Heat Pump Association could have a little leaflet pr produced 
for customers and then all you gas engineers could actually just say, oh, when you go on a job and say, hey, by the way, this is what... Well, we need the correct training do. first, though, for that. You've got to have yeah, the yeah. training. And, yeah. that's, and, that's, and that's where I think, the, I think that's where the flaw might be because I think a lot of engineers... I, I, well, as far as I'm, because I've chatted to a few people about it, and it's the set up costs for the engineer, yeah. um, what they, all, all the bits that they need to set up to do heat pumps. And I think the problem is if they go out to a job and they offer that and, you know, they hand the leaflets out and then realise, oh, actually, I haven't got the kit to do it, they're going to go back to gas boilers and they're just going to keep fitting gas boilers and just keep slinging them in for I, again, a there's not the a mis- price. There's not a misconception because really the F gas side of the heat pump, you don't really touch that. That would be the manufacturer. They then actually went wrong with that side. So you're not really going to need that much new tooling, really. Obviously, you need some electrical knowledge. We have a uh, registered engin- uh, electrical engineer on your company. But the biggest thing is the actual, on the install, is checking the property, checking the heat loss calculations, and actually checking what they've got there is correct. And that's, yeah, a bit, and that's why we all, we all go back to heat pumps. I'd say all the time, people go, I've had a heat pump fitted. It's cost me X because of electricity. You go, well, your radiators are wrong, the pipework flow sides are wrong, you're not yep. getting the, the right delta T across the system. And I've been to some engineers guy that obviously do a um, callback work for some manufacturers. I look at it and go, well, this was never going to work. Yep. It was never yep. going to work. And, and then they blame the manufacturer they pump. It's not their fault. Yeah. They haven't put it in. No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, you're, 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 you're totally right, Paul. But just going back to the point you said, which was very interesting, and it's something we, we are, we are, we are, um, trying to, to, to develop and it's, it's early stages but you talk about gas gas safe which if you install a gas boiler you've got to be gas safe okay um, and and basically got the a, a certification scheme as, as such um, will come and order you but they're looking at the more gas safety they don't come and look at what skills you've got to no. actually install it so there's a bit of disconnect there and i think that's something we could develop where 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 the actual skills are combined with the safety and 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 the big thing which is missing on gas gas is is it installed correctly is it set up correctly is it commissioned correctly is the delta t's done right is it hydraulic balanced right is it in condensing mode and none of that is done or or You've got the benchmark book, which you've got on gas, but does anybody check it? Does anybody come out and audit it? Okay, so I think there's a bit of disconnect, and that's something which which could be developed, and then you maybe have some sort of skills card. So, yeah. so, so if you're a, you're a, you're 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 an installer, at the moment you go down the gas route because that's the most common equipment out there. But if yeah. you wanted to do Hydrogen, if that's a develop, you have a skills card for hydrogen. If you have one for oil, you have one for oil. You have one for air source heat pumps, you add that to this. You have you add one for electrics or whatever, and then you're adding to your skills under one skills card as a competent so like person one, scheme. One, like one yeah. umbrella for all those yeah. different, yeah. like, and, and, yeah. And, go, yeah. and going down more of a competent person scheme. And I think that's something I think most installers would like and I think it simplifies it but it's given them that they need the correct skills to get that added to the to the to the skills card and it recognizes that they have got the skills to actually install that technology because it's biomass as well there's, there's all sorts of technology and, that, and and from the heat pump industry yeah I want to sell heat pumps don't get me wrong but I, I truly recognize heat pumps are not the silver bullet okay it's going to be a mixture of technologies gas is going to be around at least for the next 10 to 15 years and in that time there may be pockets of the, which I would say hydrogen may be a solution it may be more pockets I don't think we're going to truly convert to hydrogen but there may be cities which are hydrogen uh, a lot of district heating heat pumps it'll be a mixture of products and as Paul said there may be other technologies come along I mean look how we've developed in the last 10 20 years um, I can't see what's going to happen in the next 20 years. It, it, it could change. So, so, so it's giving the installers the skills of what what products they're going to install. And I think a skills card is is something which I think would 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 really work for installers. It, I mean, that, and that's something your roadmap uh, highlighted, yeah. wasn't it? Now, obviously, yeah. anyone that knows me in industry, I'm known. Yeah, you know, I don't ever profess to be a great engineer at all. And I, I know lots of good engineers. One of the things I am an expert at, though, is how training. Uh, the psychology of training now it's all very well having skill cards and and i'm and often known for saying in this industry we train people to be qualified we're not training them to be competent 
and there is a big difference. And the training industry in its whole, uh, th th there's a lot of money involved in the training industry. And in certain sectors, well, in all sectors, really, you, you can go and get qualified quite e easily. doesn't mean you're competent. Um, it's more and, I, and, I, and I think I, I'd like to see the industry really look and start to look at instructional design and the psychology of learning and really get to understand it. Because at the moment, when I go and watch a lot of training, and I watch a hell of a lot of it, uh, you've got some very competent people that are very technically knowledgeable and then they're put into situations where they train and they, they might even have some very good up-to-date standards and et cetera, et cetera. But there's, that's not really how we learn. And I'll give, I'll give you a little example. In our industry, we think if training is hands-on, it's the holy grail. All the evidence, psychological evidence around learning is you have to make it active and engaging for your brain to learn. Now, unfortunately, in this industry, they think if it's hands-on, oh, you're acting, you know, it's active. And that's not active. And I'll give you an example. So I went to some training once and the person said, right, Nathan, Mr. Gambling, you watched me assemble this product or component, you now assembling it. So while I'm assembling it, my mind can be thinking, shit, I didn't get the dinner for, uh, for, for tonight or I've got to take my daughter to piano lessons. My brain's actually not thinking about what I'm doing because I watched the person do it. It's in working memory and I'm now assembling it and he's checking his tick boxes. I'll say, yeah, he's done it. All he would have had to have done is say, Mr. Gambler, can you now assemble this component after you've watched me do it? And ask one question, a how question. He said, well, how could you assemble this better than I've done? Now, all of a sudden, my brain's active. It's, it's building architecture within my brain, different neurological, just because they asked that one question. And it's little simple techniques like this that our industry are not getting. Just because you've got hands on and you've got all this sort of um, practical training going on, it doesn't mean it's active or engaging. You have to ask the right questions. And that simple how question, you know, how can I make do this? How could you assemble that better, Nathan? Oh, my brain's now actually, it's not about to think about a chicken dinner or taking my daughter, because you can daydream while you're actually doing stuff. Uh, it's yeah. now to think, yeah, how, if I put that back there first, well, why would he put that second? I'm actually now building neurological pathways. That's the only way we remember stuff, because the other thing we don't get in this industry, and it's heavily, heavily researched, is our brains are designed to forget. They're efficient systems that we need, that we don't want all that rubbish in it. So that's an excuse for forgetting my birthday, Nathan. <laughs> and it's called the forget. <laughs> Anyone can Google it. It's called the forgetting curve. You know, it's studied by a guy called Ebbinghaus. We will forget stuff. As soon as we walk out that train centre, we will forget most of it. Unless it's been, it's made to go into long-term memory from, work, from uh, working memory. And we really need people involved in training. And I'd speak to a lot of people involved in training. <laughs> and they all say, yeah, 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 no, if we get it. And they don't. Uh, we need them to start, because if we got, get to a stage where we are uh, got competent installers installing all this technology, we want them to do it well, because otherwise it's going to go a bit peaked on. Um, and it's, it's only simple techniques, simple question techniques. Now, I want to bring Paul back in. So, Paul, you work in uh, domestic and commercial, but you're very well known in commercial. Is, is there any sort of noise going on in commercial? Are they looking to, to install renewable systems in sort of the big systems you do? To be perfectly honest, I've never been asked. No, I've had, I've never had an inquiry. And that's interesting because you you work with some big stuff, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we do, I just had a one point two megawatt system, haven't I? In your in back of your of your words. Oh, yeah, yeah, true, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but um, no, I mean, obviously, my lot of stuff is retrofit. A lot of it. On, I mean, the only thing that really happened sort of like five six years ago, we had the biomass big boilers come in, didn't we? But most of them I go around, I see they're all turned off now because they haven't worked or they've broken down or they haven't, in fact, they've been badly installed. And then the little gas boiler has been fitted to the soil and it's chugging away. So that big biomass market that happened, I don't think any of that, them boilers are working at all now. Phil, do you need to get involved with sort of like the uh, big commercial stuff? I know you're very well known in, in domestic, but... Um, I wouldn't say the size of what Paul gets involved in megawatts, probably about up to about 150 kilowatts um we, we go so small small commercial um that would tend to be the ground source heat pumps um and one of the barriers to that is in infrastructure because if you're doing an 150 kilowatt ground source then that, that's quite an investment in the uh in the boreholes of that system uh, <laughs> but but uh, but the systems which which do go ahead and there's quite a few tend to combine heat pumps with 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 cooling as well as heating um and hot water if there's large hot water so we've done, we've done a quite a lot of um hotels swimming pools um office blocks um which are utilized both those systems 
I think it's worth mentioning yeah. for any installers that are watching this and think, oh, do I get into this sort of kind of technology? This isn't new technology. I mean, there's millions and millions of offices in this country that use heat pump technology to heat and cool, cool the, the offices. It's not, it's not a new technology. Heat pumps have been around. You've all got one. It's a fridge but, um, or a freezer. <coughs> but it's, uh, it's obviously going to be coming into this sector. We've got one. We're going to be running out of time on this Zoom podcast soon. Phil, I didn't know whether there's any sort of snippets of information you can give uh, the installer. You'll notice that, uh, unfortunately, my Wi-Fi went down uh, right at the end, the last minute of that um, podcast. Uh, so I'd like to thank my guests, Paul, Phil and Keith. And follow me on my uh, podcast because we'll be chatting to them three, no, uh, no doubt, again about this topic, about how we can get uh, more people and, or, and why would you want to get involved in renewables. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Installer and Installer Festival is going to be going on for much longer. So make sure you sort of uh, keep uh, looking on the internet, to see what they're going to be doing. Uh, check out Nibby's website and also check out uh, the Gas Safe Superheroes website. Uh, so once again, follow and like uh, the, the podcast on, on Spotify and YouTube and, and all this iTunes. And you can also find me now on YouTube. I've only just started doing YouTube and you can find me at Beta Teach. Okay, thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Thanks for watching. We've got more coming soon. On the 22nd of May, 22nd, 23rd, if you visit thoroughflush.co.uk, you'll see all about magnetic demineralization, what it does, BDI 2035, and all that sort of stuff. Thank you very much.